Before we start talking about relationships within circles, we have to define some common vocabulary so that we know how to talk about circles. So first off, a circle is basically a set of all the points in a plane that are equidistant from a fixed point in the plane called the center of the circle. Graphically what that means is if I look at this red center and I go a distance of two feet away from it, the circle is the set of all of the points which are this distance of two feet. So if I drag that all the way around, I'll get a set of all of these different points that together make up a circle. Okay. In terms of notation for a circle, we usually refer to it by its central point or its center. For this circle, there's several points that are on it, but we're going to name it by the one that's in the middle. And we do that in the following way. Circle O means literally circle O. So just like we have a notation representing triangles as a triangle, the notation representing the word circle is a circle with a dot in the center. And the reason we put that dot in the center is so that we don't confuse the circle notation with a zero or the letter O. Now there's some other parts of a circle that are going to be really important. This fixed distance that the each of the points on the circle are away from the center are called the radius. And it's the line segment that connects the center to any other point on that circle. So for example, One radius would be a point connecting the center O to a point on that circle. So OB would be one such radius. So that's segment OB would be a radius. Also, O to A, this segment is another radius. In fact, any one of these segments connecting the center to a point on the circle would make up a radius of the circle. A chord is a line segment that connects one point on the circle to another point on the circle. An example of that would be the segment BC. From B to C is a line segment connecting two points on the circle. So that is what we call a chord. Another chord would be the segment connecting A to B. Now that chord, AB, is actually a special kind. It's called the diameter. The diameter is a chord that intersects the center of the circle. So it's a chord because it connects two points on the circle, but it's also a diameter because it passes through the center. Take a minute to think about what the relationship between the radius and the diameter must be. Now you're probably already familiar that a diameter is two times the radius because a diameter, since it passes through the center, makes up one, two radii. You could also represent this as the radius is half the diameter or the diameter over 2. Now, it turns out that all of the radii in the same circle are congruent to each other. It's because of that definition of circle. It actually follows from that definition. So a conclusion that follows from this theorem is that each of the radii that we observed before must be congruent to each other, in particular AO must be congruent to segment OB, which also must be congruent to segment OC. So all of the radii within a circle are congruent. It's a useful piece of information that will come into play later. There's another part of a circle that we're going to talk about, and it's actually the central angle. And the central angle of a circle is one whose vertex is in the center of the circle, or one of the vertices of this angle is in the center. Um, central angles are formed by intersecting radii. So here's an example. Looking at our first circle, one central angle would be angle B O C. The angle which starts at B has O as a vertex and connects to C. Another central angle would be angle A O C. And yet a third central angle is A, O, B, this angle. So angle A, O, B. Take a moment to look at the second circle and name all of the central angles you can see. We'll go over these angles tomorrow.
Okay. Now, there's another part of a circle called an arc. And an arc of a circle is the portion of its circumference between two points on that circle. So an example of one arc on this circle would be the arc connecting point B and point C, and it's the portion of the circle's circumference, or this outside part, that connects those two things. Now we label arcs a lot like segments, with the two points that make them up, but rather than a straight line, we draw an arc over top of them. Another arc that we can consider is arc A C, it's the arc connecting A to C. A third arc that we can consider is the one connecting points A and B. Now, if you notice, there might actually be two ways of writing that. Do I know if that arc goes this way or if that arc goes upward? Well, if I just write arc AB, I'm going to assume that it connects only those two points and none of the points in between. However, if I decided to write arc, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to label the top of my arc. AB. If I decided to label arc ACB, that would be the arc that starts at A, passes through C, and continues on to B. I'm going to clean things up and express one other arc, so I'm just going to erase my arc marks. You can label any arc in this way, so I'm actually going to label one more that I'm going to point out, and it's arc CBA. Take a second to see if you can realize what arc that is. Okay, so hopefully you notice it's the arc that starts at C, continues to B, and passes through B. Oh, let me make that a little bit nicer. Continues through B until it reaches A. So it's this large portion of the circumference of the circle. So that's how you can label arcs. Now that we know how to label them, there are actually a few special kinds of arcs that we can talk about. In order to talk about these special arcs, we should uh, just be reminded that um, the total number of degrees around the outside of a circle, all the way around the outside, is 360. And we've talked about that before. So one kind of special arc is one who has a measure of 180 degrees, which is basically making up half a circle. So if there's 360 in the entire circle, 180 would make up half a circle, and that's called a semicircle. An arc whose measure is less than 180, not taking up half a circle, is called a minor arc. And an arc whose measure is greater than 180, making up more than half a circle, is a major arc. So an example of each of these, one semicircle would be arc AB, the one depicted here. The arc starting at A, traveling halfway around the circle, and ending at B is a semicircle because it takes up half a circle or 180 degrees of that circle. One minor arc would be C B or B C. Another minor arc would be A C and one major arc would be A B C or C A B. Those are two major arcs. We'll look at more parts of circles, and then we'll start looking at relationships of circles tomorrow. So I look forward to seeing you in class.